What's up everyone? So I'm here in beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia, and I wanted to quickly touch on the controversy around the crunch exercise that I didn't have time to do in the Ab Science Explained video. So in 2011, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and Dr. Brett Contreras published an article in the NSCA's Journal of Strength and Conditioning titled To Crunch or Not to Crunch. And in that article, they summarized the most common arguments against doing the crunch exercise and then offered counter arguments for all those. And so what I wanted to do in this video is basically just summarize their article. So the first and apparently most common argument is that spinal flexion has been shown to herniate discs in some in vitro research in cadaveric pig spines. So basically they hook the pig spine up to an apparatus that applies a compressive load and then it undergoes thousands of flexion and extension cycles. So basically like just bending the spine back and forth. And in at least five of those studies, a majority of the discs did actually show herniations, which seems to suggest a strong relationship between spinal flexion and disc herniation. And this is a claim that, while technically true, has a few issues with it when applying it to exercising humans in the gym. First, there's no fluid flow in cadaveric spines, meaning that their functionality is different than living human spines that have fluid between the discs. Pig spines also have smaller ranges of motion when it comes to flexion and extension, and in the cadaveric spines, all of the muscles were removed, which not only changes the spinal biomechanics, but just limits its applicability in the real world. And like I said, in these studies, often thousands, or in some cases, tens of thousands of spinal flexion cycles were tested at once, which is far more crunches than even the most avid ab trainee would do in a single typical training session. But in spite of these challenges and Schoenfeld and Contreras' claim that cadaveric tissue isn't a relevant model to humans and that intervertebral discs actually adaptively strengthen in response to progressive exercise, many folks still hold that humans have a quote, limited number of flexion cycles, meaning you can only flex your spine so many times before it gives out or you herniate a disc, and that you should save these flexion cycles for doing daily activities like tying your shoe or picking up an object rather than sort of wasting them on crunches. And not withholding all of these counters, and despite the fact that there is no convincing evidence in humans that there are a limited number of flexion cycles, I think that even if there was, these folks would have a difficult time explaining away the heaps of anecdotes from successful athletes who've accumulated millions of spinal flexion cycles across successful careers without issue. And in the article, they go on to highlight some other research that shows that genetics actually play a huge role in terms of spinal degradation and that the wear and tear from progressive exercise plays a comparatively minor role, especially when you consider the allowance of time between training sessions, alleviating disc stress and allowing the tissues to remodel and repair. And they go on to propose multiple benefits of spinal flexion exercise like crunching over static-based exercises like planks. So first, spinal motion has been shown to increase nutrient delivery to discs, which is important in preventing disc degeneration since Age-related decreases in disc nutritional status has been implicated as the primary cause of disc degeneration. Secondly, like I sort of alluded to, there's a well-established adaptive mechanism at play, wherein proper doses of spinal flexion actually strengthen the discs and surrounding tissues, potentially preventing future injuries. Thirdly, because of the importance of eccentric contractions for maximizing muscle hypertrophy, crunches may simply be better than their static counterparts for maximizing hypertrophy. And in the article, they also cite mobility improvements, prevention of low back pain, and sports-related performance enhancement. In terms of practical recommendations, they suggest staying at or below 60 reps of spinal flexion per workout, and they suggest taking at least 48 hours between crunching sessions to allow for recuperation. They also recommend waiting at least one to two hours after waking before doing any spinal flexion-based exercise as the discs become more elastic and flexible as the day goes on, reducing the risk of prolapse. So I've linked the original article and a T Nation summary of the article in the description for you guys to go ahead and read on your own. Um, also, if you ended up here before watching my Ab Science Explained video, I'd recommend going and watching that one. Uh, it might help this one make more sense. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry if there was some wind I'm recording uh, on the Okanagan Lake. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.